In 2022, Samsung merged the Galaxy Note with its top Galaxy S device to create a new model, the Galaxy S22 Ultra. In 2023, Samsung is very much continuing what it started. This isn't a huge departure or a rethinking. It's a reinforcement of that previous device, but it's a reinforcement of a great device, one of the most popular phones of 2022. We're sure it's also going to be one of the highest rated phones for this year as well. I'm Cam Bunton from PocketLint, and this is our review of the Galaxy S23 Ultra. And if you do like it, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe and tap the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more. The Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra looks nigh on identical to the S22 Ultra. You'll struggle to tell the difference between the two, which are basically matched in terms of design and build. There are some color differences, but Samsung's big story here is one of sustainability. Across the device, there's been an increase in post-consumer materials. More of the plastics come from PET bottles and fishing nets. All of the aluminium is recycled, as is the glass. The packaging is also 100% recycled, with Samsung looking to boost those eco-credentials with this device. But the phone still carries an IP68 rating and is still constructed with an aluminium body, with a glass back and soft curves towards the edges, leaving you with a screen that, for the most part, is flat. Now, there's no avoiding that this is a big phone and one-handed use can be a little tricky. It's noticeably more difficult to use than something like the Pixel 7 Pro, even though the screen size is almost the same. The ends are flattened and can just about get it to stand unsupported, with the S Pen sliding into its dock on the base. Now around the back, the camera lenses all sit in their own little islands, as was the case with the S22 Ultra, but now this is a design that spans across the whole family, with the S23 and S23 Plus now sharing the same overall aesthetic. There are stereo speakers on the Galaxy S23 Ultra supporting Dolby Atmos via a toggle in the settings. The left speaker is seamlessly integrated into the top of the phone above the punch hole, and the right speaker sits on the base of the phone. Now, the location of this second speaker is questionable, because when you rotate the phone to play games, you'll almost certainly muffle it with your palm. Now, if you're looking for main Major changes from the previous generation in terms of hardware and display capabilities, you're not really going to find them here. As per the Galaxy S22 Ultra, the S23 Ultra has a 6.8-inch AMOLED display with the same QHD Plus resolution and adaptive refresh rates up to 120Hz. It even has the same 1750 nits peak brightness, but that's no bad thing. This is a great display. There's vibrancy and saturation, great viewing angles, and we found the adaptive brightness to be pretty good too, especially when you step out into bright sunshine and it ramps up. Now, AMOLED is known for those deep blacks and sometimes in darker conditions, darker shades can get crushed, especially when watching movies, but there's a setting here to boost visuals and make them a little brighter to escape that. Naturally, there's support for HDR, and content on this phone really does pop. When it comes to the core internals, the big change here is the move to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. This is the latest hardware from Qualcomm that's powering a number of flagship devices, but this is specially designed for Samsung with a faster clock speed and boosted GPU performance. It's silky smooth, really showing off increased refinement in things like animations in One UI 5.1, so the whole device looks and feels better. But fire up your favorite game and you'll find it wonderfully smooth, pushing out a premium play experience without getting too hot. There's a vapor chamber to aid cooling, and even after long sessions on our favorite games, it still felt cool. There's the option for either 256 gigabytes or 512 gigabytes of storage, with a top level one terabyte storage available available exclusively from Samsung. There's no option for micro SD, sadly, but you might be surprised to find 60 gigabytes is taken up by system files. Compare that to 22 gigabytes on the Pixel 7 Pro, and it gives a suggestion of the cost that comes with Samsung's One UI skin and the additional bloat that this phone adopts. The 5000 milliamp hour cell inside remains the same as it was previously, with Samsung's version of fast charging topping out at 45 watts wired. That makes it one of the slower charging flagship devices on the market. There's 15 watt wireless charging too, which again won't win any prizes for speed. And exactly why Samsung isn't joining the fast recharging race, we don't know, but it means that you won't get the advantage that you might with the OnePlus 11 with its 100 watt charging or the Vivo X90 Pro with the 120 watt charging. But the endurance of the S23 Ultra is good and it will last you through the day and beyond. Of course, it depends what you're doing with your phone, but in casual daily use, we reach the end of the day without needing to rush for a charger. Let's move on to the important stuff the cameras. So while most of the S23 Ultra remains the same as before, Samsung is betting big on pixels, packing the phone with a 200 megapixel sensor 
sensor. Like all other high resolution sensors, it combines these pixels to create a super pixel, which is better for low light capture. Now, we wouldn't dismiss the 200 megapixel camera as purely marketing, but certainly don't take it at face value. The camera isn't better because of the out and out resolution. Now, the resolution does mean you can crop into images to get more detail, but we doubt there will be many people who shoot in 200 megapixels. And even if you do, when you crop into those images, looking at 200 megapixel and 12 megapixel images side by side on a computer, there's very little difference. And the notion of cropping in to get more detail is interesting because Samsung also provides three times telephoto and a 10 times telephoto camera, which on the whole give you better results for closer detail than sensor cropping does. You do get the option to zoom in on the 200 megapixel mode, but in all the tests that we did, you get better clarity and contrast from the images if you just use the telephoto lenses. Now with all that out the way, it's fair to say that the S23 Ultra has one of the best camera systems on the market. The main camera is excellent in normal conditions with Samsung's signature saturation of blue skies and green grass giving images a pop that might look flat otherwise. But it's as a system where the Galaxy S23 Ultra really makes its case. You can pinch to zoom from 0 to 6 times through to 100, and while far reaches of the zoom do start to look more like a watercolour painting, there's no shortage of creative opportunity. And it seems that taking photos of the moon is something that it's good at too. Many phones just won't focus here. So all credit to Samsung there. The telephoto performance is great with the 10 time lens being the real differentiator over other phones that only want to offer three or five times. A lot of Samsung's push on the S23 series of phones has been around night mode or nightography as they like to call it. We've always considered Google to lead the way here in terms of simplicity and results, but Samsung has made some real gains because the front camera is also great in low light. The night mode is essentially automatic. You just point and shoot and it will automatically take a longer exposure in low light. It works well for static images, but Samsung's tendency to produce warmer images doesn't always work in its favor. Now, as we've mentioned, the One UI software loaded onto this phone is big, but it offers a lot. The important thing to note is that One UI 5.1 on the Galaxy S23 Ultra is smooth and fast. It's fast to navigate with super smooth animations, but there is a cost associated with it as as we've already mentioned. It takes 60 gigabytes out of your storage before you even get to your own storage requirements. There are lots of apps that Samsung wants to bundle or add in the setup and many more that you can remove, but there's still duplication of messages, the phone app, gallery, browser, calendar, and keyboard, all of which we think pale in comparison to Google's own apps. In that sense, some of the tinkering with Android doesn't really make sense, but our biggest bugbear is the horizontal scrolling in the apps tray, because it just doesn't make sense. You scroll up and then have to scroll sideways, meaning that the things at the top of the list always stay there and make them hard to reach. On the S23 Ultra, you also have a full suite of S Pen functions adopted from the old Note line, giving you a further range of interaction options. Again, this gives a full range of interaction options from handwritten notes to screen capture and highlighting. So in the end, the Galaxy S23 Ultra doesn't make any big changes from its predecessor. But at the same time, the boost in camera performance and the additional power build on areas where Samsung was already top of the game. The phone's overall quality of design, the strong looks and the outstanding display carry over from 2022 and now present a package that's one of Android's best devices. There are a few areas where Samsung could elevate the experience, the night shooting could be a little better, the speaker arrangement isn't ideal, but as a package there are a few phones finer or more desirable than the Galaxy S23 Ultra. Let me know what you think of Samsung's latest premium flagship in the comments down below. Or you can get me on Twitter, I'm at Cam Bunton. If you did like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe and tap the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more. And I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.